Hello, and welcome to Six Degrees from Cannabis. I'm your host, Tori Rarick, PharmD and Holistic Healer. Each episode features a candid conversation about how connecting with the cannabis plant has enhanced an individual's wellness journey. Here to honor the plant, talk about healing, and have fun. Hello, hello. It is your host, Tori Rarick, Mindfulness Guide and Healer here, offering you an invitation before we get into this beautiful episode with Eliza. For those of you who are curious about learning to lead with your feminine energy and stay in that power, I invite you to check out Well Connected, my self-healing membership. This community was created for leaders who choose to amplify messages of love and would like to access inner harmony, build connection with your intuition, and build confidence in your authentic path. Each month, we cover a new theme and tap into a new energy center within ourselves. If you'd like to learn more, visit torirarick.com slash membership. This will all be in the show notes as well. Join Well Connected to be held to your highest frequency, prioritize your well-being, and be the leader of your life. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome back. Tonight I am so thrilled and honored to be speaking with Eliza Stephen. She is a healer of many trades. She's a natural born mystic. She cultivates inner glow as a healing facilitator of many traits, as I mentioned. I'm going to list a few so you can understand the scope of Eliza. She's a certified holistic doula, certified postpartum doula, certified sound healer, Reiki master teacher, certified crystal healer, and certified in Watsu. And she continues to study and learn while expanding her community to others. I know there are things that I miss, Eliza, but why don't you say hello? Hi, Tori. Thank you so, so much. Oh, I'm just so happy to be here and your podcast is brilliant. I'm just happy to be here honoring cannabis with you. I'd love to hear about your first experience and or your first exposure to the cannabis plant. I love that you asked this question. I think it's such an important question, especially when we go back and look at any relationship that we have in our life. We look at the the conception and the birth, you know, (laughs) we really look at those energetics that brought two beings together. I feel like something just clicked off, like clicked in me. And I um, sort of had this, for lack of a better word, even like this time bomb that went off inside of me when I was young. I was in fifth or sixth grade. And all of a sudden, um, (laughs) it was just like, remember who you are. Mm -hmm. You know, I I was going through puberty. I went through puberty at kind of a younger age than most of um, my friends. I got my moon cycle a couple of years earlier. um, And I feel like that sort of spark in me um, got me dreaming really deeply um, and really interested in expanded states of consciousness and knowing. And I was in a Catholic school at that point in time and um not really resonating Mm -hmm. I was the kid in class who was like but why (laughs) yeah um you know constantly questioning the dogma um and the religion and at the same time having a really strong prayer practice Mm -hmm. and also vocal prayer practice I just love to sing you know (laughs) yes so those were things that really um lit my soul up And then I started to just sort of watch where other people were singing and spiritually singing. Mm -hmm. And where I grew up in the suburbs of Chicago, there was a lot of spiritual song in the psychedelic community. (laughs) Yes. And I was like, oh my gosh, people are becoming really blissful and singing and loving one another and moving beyond the confines of. systematic oppression and religion for sure (laughs) and I was just so inspired and so it was like fifth or sixth grade that cannabis really started to come into my view I was in love with the band fish 
Mm-hmm. Um, and I started to seek cannabis on my own. Um, just asking around, always, <laughs> always yeah. looking for um, different opportunities to get cannabis. And, you know, I was so young. I was, <laughs> I was a young girl. I wasn't really having in-depth prayerful experiences, but I was on an adventure. Mm-hmm. I was on such an adventure um, and so supported. So the first thing I really recognized in that time, you know, it's just the support from the plant yes. for life's adventures um, and for exploration and inspiration and song and expression and dance and, um, <laughs> and intelligence you know, other ways that we can be intelligent that is, that is outside of um, prescriptive knowledge. Totally. I love so, that about you. Yeah, yeah thank you. <laughs> and I love that you mentioned this calling to her because, you know, in retrospect, I can see in my personal experience how Mother Cannabis has guided me when I didn't even know she was in my realm, even when I wasn't consuming her. Um, others around me where I can see how she was supporting me just as, as you've mentioned. Oh my gosh, Troy, I have goosebumps when you say that. It's so real. You know, I work yeah. with plants every day, all day long. And <laughs> there's a few plants, very specifically cannabis being one of them, that is so heavily concentrated just in the human consciousness mm-hmm. that it's like if anybody has any sort of thought about cannabis that's outside of neutrality or something, it's like cannabis is working in their life. Wow. <laughs> yes. So what was the experience when you did consume for the first time? Mm, so many giggles. <laughs> well, <laughs> um, just, you know, my world, it shattered a little bit. I, um, many giggles, lots of upliftment, lots of laughter. And I also, um, got really angry at the state of the world. Mm-hmm. Honestly, I was like, what's going on around here? I can't even believe that more people aren't standing up and speaking their truth. <laughs> mm-hmm. I fell into a really deep depression. So when I first oh. started consuming seventh grade is when I became a, um, was when cannabis became my medicine. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah, and I would keep. Um, it was called blueberry dang. And this okay. Was this was a long ago. Yeah, this was a while ago. Um, and it was just, I was always so very easy breezy with it. There was, I was hanging out with a lot of guys, anyways. Um, mm-hmm. But in the skateboarder community, because it was um, easy access, mm-hmm. <laughs> easy access to cannabis. And so it was easy breezy. They would just hand it to me in the school hallway. Um, oh, wow. You know, <laughs> just, there was not any, I never hit it. Mm-hmm. It was never something I was going to play along with hiding. And I recognize, um, you know, I recognize my confidence in that, but I also recognize my privilege. Mm-hmm. You know, it was something that I was not going to hide. And I, I've always refused to. Um, right. Used to, yeah. And that's part of this resurgence is she has been hidden for so long. And that's part of the, these conversations is she can't be in the dark anymore. Yeah. She is freedom and she mm-hmm. is expression herself. And so it's really painful um, that she's been treated in the way that she has and used as a weapon. Mm-hmm. Well, I'm glad that you had the giggles, but <laughs> I can understand how she helped to open your eyes all more than you already were awake to what was going on and asking questions. So um, I think many of us have experienced that sort of opening up when we consume cannabis. So what was, what was your path from there with her? Mm -hmm. So that was um, all throughout junior high and then I went to a boarding school for my freshman year it's a really cool school it doesn't exist anymore it's all about um living with the land you know merging with the natural world yes I was absolutely into that their art program was fantastic 
um, you know, beautiful songs and in the middle of the woods, like surrounded by lakes. And, and the reason that I ended up going there is because it was right by my parents' cabin. Um, so they were always just so interested in moving to full time mm-hmm. and they got the opportunity. So we all moved up there and it was the best school around, you know, Definitely. it worked. It was just very aligned. Um, I didn't last very long there, Tori, mm. uh, because I wasn't able to smoke. I wasn't okay. able to have my medicine. Yes. Um, it was, I was not going to hide it, you mm. know, and it was just not allowed for, you know, however many a freshman is like, no, I'm going to be high. And they're like, no, that's illegal. Like all the, all the yeah. reasons, right? Right. Um, <laughs> but I knew that my relationship with the plants was so much more important in so many ways and especially my my mental health and also not putting my blinders back on I was not right. going to be controlled mm-hmm. I wasn't there get, you get to that point where once you see you can't unsee and there's no going back yeah yeah so you left mm-hmm. and then what yeah I left um I went to a bunch of different schools um I went to four different high schools Mm -hmm. and just cannabis really led the way, Mm -hmm. honestly, through, through so many different corridors. It's a labyrinth, you know, it's an adventure. Right. And I was just trusting the plant. Mm -hmm. You know, we can be pulled into some sticky situations in retrospect, but then as we were in those situations, we were actually totally safe right and just exploring consciousness so can you share a bit more because you are a mentor and a healer within the feminine arts so how does cannabis fit into that I have been working with cannabis as a womb medicine which is so powerful (laughs) you know there's so many ways to work with cannabis in the womb Um, What I really focus on is merging cannabis um, with the body, Mm. the energetic body, and learning how to bring cannabis into our womb through our connection of the earth, of the natural world. Mm -hmm. So sometimes when we work with cannabis, it can be overwhelming. Mm-hmm. And I like to use the, like a, a mutual friend, <laughs> Mama Earth, mm-hmm. Mama Gaia, you know, the, the womb of our planet, the womb of creation, the core of our planet deep down in the center of our earth. So I, I guide women to descend mm-hmm. energetically into the core of the planet where we can meet with cannabis mm-hmm. <laughs> in a way that really connects to our own unique understanding, our own unique frequency, and then bring that energy back up into our bodies, into our womb, and blend our voices, blend our light. What do you witness happening when you're leading women through this? And are you leading only women through this experience? I have worked with men, and they are so open and so playful and and so fun. I do have majority women. I would say about Mm -hmm. my practice is probably 80% women. Um, And then the men who come forward are usually the husbands or the the partners um, of the women working with me. And it's been fun too, uh, which is really special. But because they see such a, a large transformation and they're like, oh, I'd love to experience that for myself. Yeah. And what do you witness after these ceremonies? What's Mm. the transformation within the individual? A lot of safety. Mm. You know, there's just a sense of security that happens first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Mm. It's a recognition of the plant and themselves merging in a union, Mm -hmm. a divine union. So... It's just very prayerful. Mm-hmm. There's, this, there's this essence that cannot be tamed, but also this essence that is just everlasting 
Mm -hmm. and um, everlasting in the way of change, in the way of flow, in the way (laughs) of evolution. And it's just this sort of embodiment, this feeling that one who has lived in that way can recognize in another. You know, it's just yes. this sort of security within who they are. And um and understanding the the purpose and the being of their sickness journeys. Mm-hmm. Right? Yeah, why they were moving to the medicine in the first place, what that inspiration was. And there's just such a sense of confidence even <laughs> in who they are and in their wholeness and in their fullness. Um, it's peaceful. Yeah. In like the deepest, darkest dungeon times of life, you know? That's so beautiful. I love to hear it. Um... So let's talk about the energetics a little bit, uh, which I know you've spoken about extensively, you've held webinars about, and I really appreciate your perspective. So can you share just like break that down? What does that mean to someone who might not understand what the energetics of cannabis are? And then we'll talk a little bit more about how you preserve that, how you feel that frequency and so on. Mm -hmm. So the energetics of cannabis oh my gosh so vast I mean we can think about it from a consciousness perspective from a frequency perspective I like to think about um all of the different ways but through a lens of prayer that's just how I work Mm -hmm. I work through a sort of um sacred union lens a merger lens where my being merges with cannabis and then I speak about the energetics from that union Mm -hmm. so one thing that I think is important to recognize in the energetics of cannabis is that cannabis is the teacher Mm -hmm. (laughs) cannabis is the one that's that's holding space for it all you know we can we can talk about intentional usage and and mindful um, usages and we can talk about the dangers of habitual use and what that can do to somebody in a spiral or um, numbing themselves and all of those things which I think are important conversations but really cannabis allows it (laughs) cannabis holds space for it all yes for it all such a powerful energy such a compassionate Mm -hmm. like what a deep 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 mother energy yeah so what would you say to someone who comes to you and they're struggling with that habitual use and um they're feeling maybe some guilt about it or some shame and um they want to mend it but aren't sure how how would you approach that i love to work on cannabis as a practice Mm -hmm. (laughs) as a prayer practice just like yoga yeah is a practice right um our relationship with cannabis is always evolving and so when we have the idea of practice and we pair it with rearranging reconnecting rekindling our relationship for a deep listening Mm -hmm. Um, it's almost like shame can't even exist anymore Mm -hmm. in that, which I think is important because cannabis is holding space. Right. Or, I mean, if the teacher is allowing it, like it's okay to happen. Yeah. We're all just figuring it out. Um, so I think one of an important question in that sort of, am I working with cannabis in a healthy way for myself mm-hmm. <laughs> is, is to decide, um, you know, what that means for you personally. Right. And I think it's also great to, to look at dream life. You know, I think it's mm-hmm. important. Like when we are dreaming, we are healing. 
you know, dreams are such an important, important part of consciousness expansion and um, deep healing. So if we're no longer dreaming, that could be a sign that we should look into perhaps rekindling or reconnecting our relationships. Oh, I love that. I think that's fascinating. Yeah. And when you've talked about holding that energy, even without consumption, how does someone do that? What does that mean? Oh my gosh, I, I love so much um, talking about it. You know, you know how we don't necessarily um, consume a rose? Mm. <laughs> when we're given a bouquet, we're not, our first thing we do is not, um, we don't eat it right away or something. <laughs> But we're in such a deep consumption of its ultimate beauty and all that it means to us in the traditions and our past experiences and the memory Mm -hmm. that the rose holds. You know, there's all sorts of um, codes or just experiences, um, acknowledgments that happen in our body, in our mind, (laughs) in our emotions when we just meet with a flower. Um, So really looking at cannabis is such a flower as well. Yeah. Activating all of our senses first and foremost, you know, really gazing at cannabis as we would a rose. Mm. Enjoying the beauty. (laughs) Don't you see people doing that? Like they hold it up to the light and they they look at all of the different crystals and the colors and they inhale it deeply before they smell it and um, they inhale it so deeply that they can even taste it. Yes. Oh, yeah. Activating our sensual body, you know, in mm-hmm. all the ways um, with cannabis and in our sixth sense as well, you know, our intuition, mm-hmm. <laughs> our listening faculties, um, right. holding cannabis up to our body, up to our heart and just allowing our heart to wrap around cannabis. And making space to feel cannabis wrapping around our heart. So beautiful. Yeah, just taking her in and calling on her. Mm -hmm. I think that a big important part of this is just living in a reciprocity. Like you said, taking her in and calling upon her. Cannabis, what can I do for you today? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, she holds so much. And I know you've said that, but I'm just thinking about it now and all of the experiences and problems and queries I've come to her with and she's held it all. It's incredible. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. What other layers of the cannabis spiral can you share with us? (laughs) Oh, it's such a spiral, such a labyrinth. Um, just it's important to honor where anybody is at in their relationship with cannabis Mm -hmm. you know I've I found that one of the frequency energetics of this plant um, is that it's really none of my business where anybody else is at with the plant Mm -hmm. (laughs) unless they come to me right unless they ask me and, and they want my opinion um, and I found that's a frequency energetic, you know, a direct teaching from the plant where it's truly none of my business how anybody else's relationship is going with this mm-hmm. divinity, <laughs> with God. And I've noticed a consciousness sort of energetic is having a lot of opinions about it, mm-hmm. if that makes sense. You know, so it there's does. like direct teaching from the plant, which I, I like to say is frequency. Mm-hmm. And then there's more so what's happening in, you know, so many different facets of cannabis culture, mm-hmm. or even just like the astral realm, quote unquote, astral realm of cannabis, and where we could perhaps first go to really become inspired and to open ourselves up to new ideas, mm. in our muses. Um, and all of this is so important, you know, where the individual and with the divine and something that cannabis um, is so beautifully facilitating for for women when we 
liquid cannabis is womb medicine is the merger of the mm-hmm. frequency and the consciousness of that human realm of all the opinions <laughs> about mm-hmm. other people's relationships and also just that direct teaching that we can receive as well where you know we, we can really feel our ego integrate into yes. our feel of it. Um, I've noticed that that really happens through singing, <laughs> through song. Can you share a bit, because you were my first teacher in the connection of the womb space and our sacral chakra and our throat chakra and using our voice, can you just share a bit about that connection and then maybe weave some of cannabis into that too? Mm. There are so many ways that the throat and the womb, even the yoni are connected and how our experience and our acknowledgement of these portals on our bodies are related to our relationship with the natural world. The natural world is always, always speaking to us. Mm -hmm. Um, So we can hear the natural world through our sensory body, you know, through our third eye, right? (laughs) Or we can hear the natural world just in the whistling of the wind mm-hmm. and um, with just our, our, our normal ears, the way that they hear. Um, and we can also hear the natural world in, you know, very specific ways that um, we can get goosebumps, we can get tingles on our body yeah. when we experience weather. <laughs> you know, there's so many ways we can, we can hear the natural world. That's the same with cannabis. However, when we start to really draw that into our, our body, into our core, starting to draw that sensual experience inside of us deeper and deeper, mm-hmm. um, and then we bring it out to where we can express, you know, so if that's the voice, that's the sound, or sometimes it's dancing, you know, for mm-hmm. me, it's been so activating. It's been such a prayer to have it in the voice, but when we can draw those impulses into our voice that energy that Mm -hmm. light into Mm -hmm. our voice drawing those light experiences into the sound we open our mouth and we just we let it out we are experiencing the prayer of the plant in our body in real time and that's very much womb consciousness yeah (laughs) i've only learned to do that through you and it's it's been really natural to allow that because I don't know, it's, it's, <laughs> you know, we've been silenced, all these different things of how we've made it unnatural to just be and express. Um, but there have been times where I've consumed and then I, all I really want to do, I'm alone with myself really, but all I really want to do is let out a tone and I allow myself because I think of you and how you would encourage me to do that. And, and it feels good to just kind of meet her in a harmony. Oh, it feels so good. It's yeah. such an expression. <laughs> yeah, and simple. You don't have to use mm-hmm. words. You can just let it out. Yeah, yeah. There's so much that's released, but also intelligence that's given back to the plant when we let that happen. It's like we're deepening our relationship, deepening our reciprocity to Mother Earth, to cannabis, just to the natural living divinity of life. Yeah. The reciprocity is something that is really lighting up for me and something I'm, I haven't been considering. Yes, I, I put intention into her whenever I am about to consume or I um, thank her. And it's, it's really kind of like a, a transactional exchange, it feels like. But if I think about it more when, I've, when I'm experiencing her frequency and how I can be a part of that relationship and not just be receiving. I love that idea Mm. and that practice, as you said. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's been such a guidance for me in my, my own healing um, with cannabis. It's almost like the, the plant um, is just always inside of me that, Mm -hmm. you know, I can call on it um, at any point in time because I have this, very deeply established relationship and so the medicine 
it's just integrated in me. It's, it's always there. And <laughs> because my medicine of who I am is this whole and perfect being from birthright, right? Is also informing cannabis and cannabis is loving it. When I work with cannabis, I don't um, work with intention actually, Tori. Tell me more. I, um, I guess it, it's intention in a way, but I guess the only intention would to be to open up to cannabis and, um, mm -hmm. and allow cannabis to be the guide. Um, to, to take control. So I'm never asking for anything from cannabis. Mm. Um, I'm just allowing my fullness in this moment to meet cannabis and cannabis is fullness in this moment and for them to interact as they will and knowing that just my pure energy in reciprocity with cannabis is pure energy is giving me exactly what I need. So I guess the only intention would be to just have that sort of divine nurture and see what yeah. happens. That's something that I was practicing with my inner child work. I really, I would go into meditation and then I would let my little girl, my little being um, have the floor and speak. And so I can just simply do that with cannabis, let her speak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's just so much I could never even imagine. I do not want to box divinity in. Right. I, just, I love that spontaneous creation between me and the plants or between any person and the plants and just seeing what happens. Definitely. And she is so creative. Oh, the creativity. <laughs> I mean, sometimes that's the intention I set is just help me to be expansive and open and we have some good times. I can't stop writing whenever I'm with her. Oh my gosh. It just fills you up, right? On, just such, an, on such a level such a food yeah a fruit. <laughs> yeah a fruit of being yeah <laughs> would you ever see yourself refraining from using I'm trying not to use the word use um from working with cannabis like by consuming her is there a time where you'll where you can see yourself not ingesting her I love this question I have not ingested in years <laughs> so I make cannabis medicine for others Yes. You know? um, and so in that process, I make something called kind oil and it's cannabis that my husband grows. It's just beautiful. Um, so much love, you know, cannabis mm -hmm. and roses that I grow in Tulsi and lemon balm. Wow. And I mix them all together in an oil. And so as I'm making the medicine, I am tasting appropriately. Mm -hmm. um, but that's really the only time that I ever ingest. I really have found just this infinite well of cannabis medicine in my soul experience that, yeah. that I am just like infinitely fed from at this point. Mm -hmm. I did get into a, I want to say a few years ago, I got into a little car accident it was just really icy mm. um, road here and um you know I live in the mountains and this is kind of a a normal thing for <laughs> us to slide yeah. down hills at, at really slow speeds it's not that you know it's really not that treacherous um but I ended up hitting a stop sign with the front of my car and I just had some sort of like shock yes fright, fright um and fear and so I ate some of my partner's oil that night. So I, I ate cactus mm -hmm. oil and not my own. He makes um, the fully extracted cannabis oil. Yes. And so I had quite a bit of that. And I just immediately went into this beautiful grief ceremony. Mm -hmm. um, you know, all the shame. I worked it all out. Yeah. <laughs> I worked out. Um, I cried and I cried. I felt all the pain that perhaps could come for the next week or two, like right. physical, emotional, mental, um, my body pain. I like got to like vibrate it out. I got to shake it out. Mm -hmm. um, and it was such an incredible experience. I'm so happy that I chose cannabis as my medicine after that. You know, <laughs> it really brought me through that immediate ceremony that might have taken me a really long time to process yeah 
Otherwise, Do you find that she really can accelerate a situation, a healing experience? It's an acceleration in the way that it's just, I think, depth. Mm-hmm. And she like allows us to expand our own capacity to feel more in the moment so we can connect the dots. Yes. You know, more yes. so. Yeah. So it's like diving deeper into the womb of creation, diving deeper in to the spiral and all the things that were too painful to see before we now have support to see. Right. So we can look at it. Yeah. Wow. So Incredible. That's the last time I really had a deep, um, a deep journey with the, mm-hmm. with the medicine through that way. But I love rubbing warm rose cannabis oil on my body. Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. The best massage oil. And I work with fresh plants and fresh buds all of the time, um, holding them up to different parts of my body, breathing them in, breathing in their light specifically, mm-hmm. their light into my central light channel, and then singing their songs. Oh. So I sing a lot of cannabis songs, which yes. is what is my ingesting. Right. Yeah. We're definitely still connecting with her just to be holding her and working with the plants, like really, truly your hands working and making medicine and all of this. Like I I haven't had that experience. I've only been at a hemp farm once or twice, but even just to be in, in her presence and the tall stalks and all of that was an experience of itself. So I can understand how you feel so nourished with the ways you're working with her now. Yes. Also, also, Tori, I have to tell you, my husband ingests a lot. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's, it's his medicine, and he is so, um, I don't know, he's just so intelligent um, mm-hmm. with cannabis. You know, he has this sort of archetype of a comedian, of a trickster, mm-hmm. and he has like this coyote medicine. Yes. He's like cannabis. Yeah. Um, and so, since I'm so divinely connected to my husband um I get so affected (laughs) so often um whenever he is yes you know so (laughs) I think that that's that's just a a really beautiful experience to be able to you know have the the medicine um through my loved one and I would I would love to hear your take on this and I I really honor the connection that you and Patrick have, and I think it's so sacred and a great example, um, and maybe maybe a bit uncommon for the everyday. But that being said, I would love to hear about how that dynamic works out. Because for me, for example, I know when we first got to Colorado, I didn't consume much, um, and they consumed more than me, and I really had this like shame and guilt around it, like can you take a break? Shouldn't you take a break? All of this and really projecting myself on him. So um, I wanted to hear more about like that allowance that you have for yourselves to be sovereign in your relationships. I guess you did speak about this and not minding what anyone else is doing, but I'll let you have the floor on it. Oh my gosh. It's so real though. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, it's so real. So we've been on such a journey um, about this. When I am in really, really deep plant medicine work, when I am doing a plant attunement with a plant, meaning that I'm on um, what is known as a dieta in Shipibo culture, Mm -hmm. um, the ayahuasca culture, I do a lot of dietas and I really attune myself to different plants. So when I am in that sort of frequency with another plant, um, it feels very, uh, it's a narrow frequency. Mm -hmm. Um, It's very fine-tuned, and it's very subtle, and I'm listening so intently, um, you know, to plants that have uh, so much to say but don't have the faculties like cannabis has for us to be able to listen very clearly. You have to Mm -hmm. really have a, I don't want to say sharp, but it's it's a high frequency. Precise, maybe, yeah. It's it's very crystalline. Yeah, it's precise. You have to be very tuned in. Um, so I can take it so personal. Oh my gosh. <laughs> when 
Patrick <laughs> just walks in the room sometimes, it feels like it's just like a fumbling bear. <laughs> sort of clumsy, yes. big, giant bear energy, just, and it's so loud. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, <laughs> it can just be so loud, even just being in, in the proximity. Right. You know, or if I'm doing this deep medicine work on a different part of the property and he's in the garage mm -hmm. in his office, right? <laughs> in yeah. his little bear den. Um, <laughs> he's more of a wolf, actually. In his wolf den. Um, I can feel it immediately. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And it's, um, it, can, it can hit me like a ton of bricks. Totally. Um, it really can. And I can take it personal. I can go into victim consciousness and I can work all of that out. Great. That's right? what she's here for. <laughs> Thank you. I do have to um, ask him sometimes though. I'm like, hey, can you reframe today? Because yes. I'm making, you know, this medicine and I, and I really need, <laughs> I really need a clear, um, yeah, just, yeah, just a clear space. Uh, uh, thank you for expressing that. It. Oh yeah, you know, we've had so many ups and downs. There's been different parts in the relationship where I'm like, cannabis is going to be the death of us. You know? <laughs> <Right>. um, <laughs> yes. And uh, I can totally giggle about it, but it's been hard. Mm -hmm. And um, we actually married our, our two respective plant medicines. You know, he's very, very, yes. uh, very devoted to cannabis and he's had so much beautiful oh my gosh I guess the word is success you know with his um his oil that he makes and and cancer patients and I mean it's just he's doing miracle work so like I yeah, gotta thank you, recognize Pat. and respect recognize and respect um and so <laughs> we married our two plant medicines when we got married my my preferred plant medicine is ayahuasca so there's a lot of uh different myths and stories and cultural influences mm -hmm. and very, very real perspectives about how those two plants just can't get along. Things like that. Uh, and I have been experiencing that in my own life now for uh, seven, seven years. Right? Yes. Texas. And so at our wedding, we decided to marry those two plants to, to merge it and really be able to hold our own unique sovereign essences each with our own respective you know plant features and be able to come together and yes. like, come on, why not so we kind of decided that we were gonna figure that out together we were gonna work that out together and um it has been illuminating yes yeah wow we and might have to have a separate episode. episode with ayahuasca yeah i'd love to <laughs> okay we'll see what the people want i'm sure they'll say yes <laughs> Oh, I could talk about that forever. Totally. <laughs> you have such a deep relationship with the animal world. Yes. And I'm wondering what you've seen between the two, um, cannabis and how either your familiars in your house respond or the animals around your home. Um, what's their take on cannabis? Oh, <laughs> Tori's such a good question. <laughs> so we love to put the, as soon as you said it too, my cats all looked over. They They're like, like us, oh. to us. Yeah, like, hey, <laughs> no time to speak. Yes. Um, <laughs> we like to keep cannabis plants um, kind of all over the house when we can. We don't always have that many plants going depending on our traveling schedules or whatever is going on. But ideally, we have plants all over the house, <laughs> you know? Um, so the cats love, 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 love to curl up in the plant. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Sweet. <laughs> they love to. Um, they really, really enjoy the dream time. Um, I noticed my one cat, Mousy, and Patrick have such a sweet dream time relationship. She just, you know, when he's in his, his deep medicine man world, mm -hmm. um, he's just like laying on the bed. And it's this sort of energy that it's just so soft. Yeah. And delicate. It's like he is a cloud or something. <laughs> and I noticed that she walks and she lays on his chest and just purrs and purrs and, and loves him. And the interaction that they have in those moments is precious. 
Mm -hmm. So sweet. The vibrations really get along. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I would assume that they're familiar with her, too, and they feel guided and called and supported by her. Yeah, I think so, too. And they also, when they get sick, um, they'll ask for cannabis. Sure. It's very specific, though. Sometimes it's a hard no, and I would never, you know, give my animals a medicine that they're saying no to. Mm -hmm. But sometimes it's a very clear yes. Sure. And what does this mean? You you bring it out and you, you know, let them sniff and survey it or... Yes, they enter the apothecary, actually. Okay. (laughs) So at my kitchen, and I have an apothecary off to the side of the kitchen, which is just the pantry that I, you know, is now the apothecary. Um, And my cats, specifically Mousy and Little, I love that you're asking me about this because, you know, I I love it so much. (laughs) They are, they're they're herbalists. I don't know how else to say it. You know, Mousy really came into this life with the knowledge. Mm -hmm. and um little (laughs) she's the sweet precious black kitty she has been learning she is way more of an apprentice that mousy um ever has mousy's been the one teaching me yeah (laughs) yeah so it's very when when mousy wants a specific herb um she's very clear and forthright i love that but little more so needs to still smell everything Mm -hmm. and figure it out in that way Mm -hmm. um so yeah, I just open up jars. Sure. You know, I kind of have an idea of what she's going for, but they're in the apothecary and making medicines with me every day. Oh, sweet. So they're well versed. What about Zoe? <laughs> Zoe. <laughs> Zoe's a big white fluffy dog. <laughs> she um she's actually not feeling that well. Mm. She pulled a ligament. Yeah. Her arm. And so she's had some moon mother hemp CBD. Yes. Um, <laughs> yeah. And there's some days where it's very clear that she wants it. Mm-hmm. And other days where she's like, not today. She'd rather sure. have something else. Um, but Patrick's given Zoe Fico when, when we know it, she needs it. And sure. She has an immediate, an immediate response. And she's better. That you know, girl. I think that um, it's important that people know how to speak to their pets. Right. You know, we can hear the lot this, this, there's the conversation, is cannabis safe for mm-hmm. animals, right? There's a conversation, um, is THC safe or is CBD safe? And we're trying to, you know, break the plant down into all of its different, um, right. all of its different medicinal qualities. Mm-hmm. And um we're really a whole plant family over here. Yeah. We really like to keep it all together um, and really work with the, the full plant, the whole plant. And my first question to anybody wondering that is, can you hear your animals when they tell you what they need? Mm-hmm. You know, we need to really work, to work on fostering that communication and that trust without any sort of questioning. Right. Um, first and foremost, before we would know if anything is safe for our animals, because every animal is different. Mm-hmm. Just like every human is different. Totally. I heard you say on the podcast, Troy, I respected it so much. It could have been your first one. I think you said something along the lines of cannabis isn't for everybody. Totally. It's true. Mm-hmm. You know, so we just have to be able to listen and know. Yeah, that's an important conversation right now because as much as I'm an advocate for her to be an option, you're exactly right. And I wouldn't want to jeopardize anyone's relationship with her by encouraging them to work with her in ways that weren't right. Yeah, I think that um, no doubt about it, cannabis needs to be an option and needs to be free Mm -hmm. um, on all levels, just as all all humans. there's absolutely no doubt about it. And one way that we go about this is teaching how to listen. Yes. <laughs> that ancient feminine art of listening. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Beautiful. I wanted to circle back to one more thing before I get excited and talk about the temple and everything you have going on. Um, 
can you share, let's circle back to dreams really quickly because you mentioned if you're not dreaming, maybe reassess the relationship. What does that mean? How would you go about that? Do you mean um, like a taper back and like a THC break? Mm. So reassessing the relationship, rekindling the relationship. Mm. Um, You know, I love to work with cannabis, of course, number one as a teacher, but it can also be a mother, it can also be a lover, (laughs) it can also be a friend. And when we are going to reignite our sensual body, I think it's wonderful to work with cannabis as a lover, you know, remembering just that (laughs) romance that we first um, have in our first experience with it you know, and just that beautiful oasis of wonder and magic, medicine and gratitude. Um, Before we got into whatever sort of time commitment it takes to have escapism Mm. or, or whatever it may be, you know, there's like a recommitment of vows that perhaps needs to happen, some sort of ritual or ceremony, um, celebrating your anniversaries. Uh, (laughs) I love working with it um in that day in that way and also just allowing cannabis to show up however it wants to mm-hmm. um, cultivating a place to give and receive with the plant as you honor the plant the plant honors you letting you inform the intelligence of cannabis at the same time it's informing mm-hmm. you um there's just a fluidity to the relationship that moves out of habitual when yes. we go into the relationship from this practice sort of perspective Oh, I like that. Thank you for the clarification. Okay, Eliza, it's important that we talk about the mermaid temple of the womb. We talk about your school, Natura Sophia. Am I correct? Yes. You know, I've been thinking about um, perhaps a different name, but I'm oh. with it and I'm going with it. Okay. Commitment. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Let's hear about all of your magic. Okay, I'm sorry. I just have to preface. I met Eliza in the magical Rocky Mountains and her special mermaid temple, the saltwater pool, and I fell in love with her in that moment, and here we are today, and I'm so blessed. So um, that's just a little preface for the magic that is Eliza's world. Please share more. Yeah. uh, So the school in the home, it's it's all very um, plant-centered, but, uh, you know, plant-centered in the way where it's the the union between the plant and the person as the prayer, as I've been speaking about (laughs) on the, on this um, podcast so much. Um, So we really cultivate that relationship between the natural world and ourselves and all that we do, just living life as ceremonies. Um, and listening so deeply to what our union with the natural world is bringing forward uh, for the day, honoring the human, honoring the divine, and working from that intersection. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And when people come for retreats, it's as if they are given this opportunity to reset in some way to their innate state of wholeness and um, you help with the integration so they can leave with that as well. Would you say that's correct? Yes. Yeah, so the retreats that I am so passionate about holding, whether it's at the Mermaid Temple or you know, anywhere, any yes. beautiful piece of land that is- Say more about anywhere. Where could murder. that be? <laughs> um, my, one of my favorite places to have retreats is in Hawaii. I also had many retreats in Peru, and um, we're going to Sardinia next year. I mean, wow. as everything's uncertain, right? Right. <laughs> With all of that, but it's in plants. Oh, we'll be in Chile in wow. December. Um, yeah, so the Mermaid Temple, what I hear most from people is about the rebirth, and for me, when people are experiencing the rebirth, that begins before they even get here. Integration begins before anybody even steps foot here. Mm. Um, It's really about bringing our wholeness in for the entire ride, the Mm -hmm. entire time, calling all of ourselves in here and now, all parts of me here and now, calling all parts of myself 
here and now and really remaining in that in that present moment and if there's ever a time that there's a little bit of a dissociation or a place that we're entering inside of our consciousness or in our body that's forbidden we don't move forward until we have access yes. <laughs> we don't move forward um until we are taking all of these things into account and i have found that that's really what integration means you know it's it's our life with the medicine and our life without the medicine being the same yes wow incredible share more about the school you're building and developing and growing and nurturing I would love to. The goddess, you know, just the goddess, the mm -hmm. um, beautiful, beautiful earth and cosmos and, and my connection and just my experience that I've been having for um, a really long time has brought forward uh, this school. And I've been teaching and holding space for, for many years now, but this school is a very structured <laughs> way of being able to work together um you know in a temple in a temple sort of atmosphere with everybody who's interested you know i've just been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one work i've been doing a lot of one-on-one -on -one apprenticeships and mentorships which i love so deeply mm -hmm. but i have women that have been working with me now for years and years and so now they can help lead with me and so the school and their families as well it's a very family-led hmm. sort of experience um so the school is about bringing us all together and working together and creating that group soul yes. and connection with the natural world and so most of the things that i do are informed from a timeless energy a timeless divinity an ancient way of being so to speak where we merge with nature. We don't tell nature what we want from it. Mm -hmm. um, and we just allow ourselves to come forward as whole, see nature as whole as well, and bring these together and, and work from that union. So the school's focused on 13 different pillars. Um, we have a lot of plant attunement, yeah. a lot of ceremony, a lot of working with cannabis as well. And um, all sorts of plant medicines, for example, rose and, and rosemary and pulsi and jasmine and hibiscus and <laughs> um, yarrow, uh, so many beautiful flowers and herbs. Um, and there's opportunities to really work and learn and sing the songs of these plants from your own unique relationship and frequency, which really brings wow. us to a whole new understanding. Yes. So the, we have 13 pillars, like I said, and the school goes for um, 13 months, which I'm calling a full wheel. And there's opportunities for four wheels. So wow. that for 13 months, yeah, for those who'd like to then teach the material. Um, it's about a four year commitment. And it, it really truly is, you know, the feminine is slow. Mm -hmm. and like I said it's very integrated we don't move forward until we're all present wow <laughs> yeah we're moving into that forbidden place inside of ourselves that has been shut down and closed off because of how magical it is that's really beautiful so we just so bit by bit. how how can people find you where can they find more information mm. so I have a website it's called riseshinelove.com and there's portals there that can take you to my cannabis is womb medicine course and it can also take you to um, the Natura Sophia school mailing list. So the official signups for Natura Sophia don't begin until deeper into the summertime here in 2020. Mm -hmm. um, so you can go to riseshinelove.com and get on the mailing list for that. I also post things on Facebook and Instagram. So on potent, Facebook, potent things. <laughs> thank you. Uh, I love having conversations and just bringing things forward from the dream time, mm -hmm. you know, where maybe we've all saw a little flicker of a similar energy and we can get together and unpack it. Yes. Uh, it's such a beautiful way for mystics to, from all over the world, to stay connected. 
Yeah. Um, <laughs> so on Facebook, it's Eliza Natura Sophia. And then Instagram is Mermaid Temple of the Womb. And this will all be in the show notes, but just in case, I love repetition. It's how we learn. So I wanted you to hear it and see it. <laughs> Wow, Eliza, thank you for your time and your presence tonight. I'm feeling really refreshed after a long day. I think that's part of your magic. So thank you for sharing everything you have tonight. Mm, Tori, that's so part of your magic too. <laughs> I just, <laughs> you're so brilliant. The light that shines from you, like literally constantly, um, is so inspiring and beautiful and it's just captivating the way that you move about life and you dance with all of the lights around you that are informing you is, is incredible and your creativity has been so spot on and beautiful thank you, thank you. Yes. Thank you. we see each other I love you so much I love you too thank you thank you so much for tuning in to six degrees from cannabis don't forget to subscribe and leave a five-star rating. You can find more information about holistic healing and what I do by visiting toriraric.com. Find me on Instagram at yourguidetori and connect with me through direct message anytime. Peace out.